Hello, and welcome to Carnegie Mellon University's Campus Engagement Day. My name is Matthew Seeley from the Career and Professional Development Center, and I'm joined here uh, in moderating with Jocelyn Malik from Heinz College Career Services. Jocelyn, you want to give a wave? Hello, everyone. Thanks so much. Uh, Jocelyn will be assisting me with the chat and the Q&A portion. Today's session is going to feature speakers from programs at the university that prepare students for careers in government, intelligence analysis, cybersecurity, and policy. Each speaker will present a little bit about their department or program, and then we'll turn it over to our employers here uh, and folks joining on the call for a Q&A session at the end after all the presentations are done. For the presentation portion, um, I would ask if you could please keep your microphones muted as the speakers present, and please put your questions in the chat for the Q&A, and then we can bring those up uh, when we get to that portion. I would like to introduce uh, today's speakers. We have Randy Trezak representing Heinz College. We also have Emily Half representing the Institute for Politics and Strategy. And I see we have joining us as well, Deanna Matthews representing engineering and public policy. So without further ado, I'd like us to get started. And Randy, could you take us off? Yeah, happy to do it. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me start by sharing my screen. Okay, hopefully you all can see the slides. So uh, as I was introduced, my name is Randy Trezak, and I'm the program director in the Heinz College. The Heinz College, uh, as we progress through our slides, is a joint school which contains a school of information systems and management and a school of public policy. Now, within these two schools that are uniquely combined within the Heinz College, we have a number of degrees. I'm very privileged to be representing the Masters of Science in Information Security, Policy and Management. And while that name is a mouthful, the name is intentional. We're certainly looking to bring folks into our graduate school for a four to four semester, two year program to really bring the strong foundation of information security, cybersecurity, and combine that with the policy and management skills that are needed to be successful in a cybersecurity career. So as we look at the Heinz College vision, again, setting the stage for a more depth look into the MS ISPM program, we want to bring to bear to students looking at this critical think piece around how we can study issues where people and policy and technology meet together. You know, I've been very fortunate to be, have been working in cybersecurity for about 30 years, recognizing that a strong technical foundation and knowledge is important. But I've certainly realized over the years that by trying to solve the challenges of information technology securely with solely technical solutions, we're going to be somewhat limited. So as we've built this program here in the Heinz College, we certainly want to focus on that foundation of technology, but also bring to bear the legal, the risks, the cyber aspects of it, the information sharing, the risk management that is essential when building cybersecurity skills and professions. And recognizing as we look at the technical and the public policy change that's needed, we're certainly looking at ways by which we can influence the future of work, focusing on specific domains such as healthcare or public safety or information privacy, we'll bring that to bear as part of our graduate program. So as we look at our program, MS, ISPM program, Information Security Policy Management, as we look to the fall, the upcoming fall semester, we will have 82 students on campus. As I said, that'll be a mix between first year students and second year students. So all of those students are required year, between years one to do an internship. And all of them, as you would expect, would look for jobs when they're finished with the graduate program as well. And when we talked about the requirements for this session here, cybersecurity, we certainly will meet that as a requirement, but also government work. We do have as part of this program, a number of students that have qualified for the scholarship for service. 
as well as the Department of Defense, the SMART Scholarship Program. So all of those students will be required to do an internship in the federal government or a DOD organization, and will be required to do a, a number of years of service after the graduate program as well. So if we look at our MS ISPM mission, we certainly want to envision future leaders of cybersecurity, future leaders of technology. How do we manage the cybersecurity challenges by providing the technical defenses that are required, but also recognizing a sound risk management practice that is needed? You know, it would be great if all organizations had unlimited time and resources and money, but how do we prioritize what's most important to the organization? And if you go through what cybersecurity is focused on, it's focused on protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And that does require a risk management process. So we've ingrained that into our MS ISPM program, recognizing that the solid technical foundation will be, in many cases, a deterrent. How do we combine that with effective policy as well? Looking for ways by which we want to build organizations' resiliency to threat and disruption. And really the policy that we have here is to educate men and women for intelligent action. And recognizing that as well as you're all aware, information security is a horizontal that cuts across government, industry, law enforcement, healthcare, as well as the academic verticals. So more specifically about our MS ISPM program, we're very, very proud to be designated as the National Center of Academic Excellence in Information Assurance. We're also very, very proud to be sponsored by the National Security Agency, as well as the Department of Homeland Security, bringing that knowledge, skills, and abilities into our classroom. But we're equally uh, very proud of our relationship with the Software Engineering Institute, and more specifically, the CERT division. And if you're not familiar with what the, S the SEI is, it's a federally funded research and development center. So housed on the campus here at Carnegie Mellon, the CERT, which is one of the three divisions in the SEI, does work across the Department of Defense, does work across the departments and agencies, as well as academia, industry, and law enforcement. And we have a number of our faculty members that are full-time employees of the SEI and are part of our adjunct faculty that teach as part of our program as well. So we're very, very proud that these folks that are our faculty here, in addition to our full-time tenured faculty, we have folks that are in operational front lines of protecting the national security of the United States, whether it's for the Department of Defense or the departments and agencies for agencies like the Department of Homeland Security. And very, very proud that we've integrated this graduate program with our cybersecurity leaders that are part of our executive education. So we try to bring this knowledge, the skills and abilities of practitioners through our executive education into our graduate students programs as well. Some of the unique benefits of our MS ISPM program, as I mentioned, it's a four semester program, which is uh, in between years one and year two, that we have an internship requirement. And as we mentioned, the CERT program, the FFRDC, the Federally Funded Research and Development Center, they are part of our faculty as well. And we really try to build this foundation of identifying and managing cyber threats bring to the, the critical think piece that we talked about before, the quantitative management and technology. One of the most recent courses that we've added to our curriculum is a security data analytics course. Very, very proud to have our students taking that class as a way to apply formal methods and data analytics to look for those anomalies that could be malicious anomalies on the networks and systems, but how do we benefit from the years of research that's been done in things like marketing and business development? How can we apply that to an analyst role of looking for these cyber-based anomalies? We're really looking to be on the forefront of technology as well, incorporating an experiential learning component of our program, looking to build leaders of cyber, leaders of technology, applying it intelligently to make organizations more efficient while doing it securely. And we're very, very proud, like most of the departments here at Carnegie Mellon, of ex exceptionally strong alumni and the employer networks. So thank you so much for taking your time to come and listen to us today. We wanna to position you to come and recruit our students. 
We know that they will be successful, but it's also equally important for the students to know who you are and what you do and make that right decision as they're coming out of a graduate program like the MSI SPM program to be a right fit as they come in as well. And we'd love for you to kind of contribute to our curriculum development. We wanna build these students with the skills where immediately they can come in and be successful. So we'd love to invite you to come in to be part of our review and oversight of the curriculum that we build as well. And as we mentioned, uh, scholarship programs such as the DOD's Smart Scholarship Program, our students will be looking for the opportunity in the government as well. Uh, we talk about the curriculum just in terms of a very, very quick overview, just to represent the core of our program is about two thirds of the program, but we also give our students an elective capability, security electives and general electives, really looking to customize that knowledge, skills, and abilities to be successful. And we do have the experiential learning component of a project base as part of our curriculum as well. So to the left side, just very quickly, some of the core classes information security, cryptography, Python as a software development environment, cybersecurity policy and governance one and two, risk management, network and internet security, privacy in the digital age, software and security. So that's part of our security core. And on the right side of the chart, looking at the management core, building the knowledge, skills and abilities in accounting, decision-making under uncertainty, economic analysis, and ability to manage disruptive technologies. But we're also very, very sound in our professional speaking and professional writing. Communicating effectively is one of the skills we need to build for our technologies to be successful, communicating with all departments within organizations as they go out and depart from our programs as well. We have an experiential learning component, as we said, a summer internship requirement. Our students are required to do a capstone project or a thesis and looking to the right side, as we mentioned, our electives. You know, students can choose to do things like applied information secure, uh, applied information assurance or cloud security or the ethical penetration testing or host-based forensic, internet of things, database, most code analysis. So we really look to build that foundation and supplement that with the electives that the students will customize their careers. And as we look at some of our recent capstone projects, working with external organizations to bring to our students a capstone capability. We'd also love to talk to you about you sponsoring a capstone project with us. So for example, student teams work on a security testing service at a Fortune 100 large financial institution, developing penetration testing capabilities, red team capabilities, or development of a cybersecurity framework to measure the maturity of United States K through 12 educational institutions, looking at data analytic algorithms in the DOD, et cetera, zero trust. So these were the recent capstone projects our students were very fortunate to work with external organizations. So if you are interested, we'd love to talk to you about being a sponsor of a capstone project as well. Some of our recent capstone project sponsors, just very quickly, we have representation from DOD organizations, departments and agencies, as well as federal, state, and local government organizations, as well as for-profit companies. Love to work with you on those capabilities as well. And very, very proud, one of our capstone project teams actually did a vulnerability test of the city of Pittsburgh's traffic control systems. It was highlighted on a local news station, WPXI, recently as well. So very, very proud of the experiential learning component of our students' education as well. So when we wrap this up, we're looking to build these strong foundational skills and in information technology with that quantitative nature, building that critical think piece to do analysis and management as well. Looking to position a leadership capability as well to communicate, negotiate, engage, building integrity influence as well. And we do believe that our MS ISPM program is applicable across a number of domains. So very, very proud of our program and love to work with you. Looking at some of our recent employment outcomes, you can see here some of the job titles and also where our students go to work across the entire portion of the United States here, as well as internationally as well. So I know it was a very, very quick overview. I'm happy to provide these slides to you and we certainly will take questions at the end of our session today. So I think we're at our, uh, our timing mark. So Matthew, back to you and uh, go on to our next speaker. Thank you very much. Okay, great, thank you so much, Randy, for that overview, appreciate it. Um, Deanna, are you ready to present? Are you able to access your materials? Yeah, just give me one more second sure. to make it work. 
way that I need it to. There's those moments when you think that this is going to be a good idea and then you forget that your children did not actually have school today or uh, election day. They closed all the schools and all of a sudden you're on something new. <laughs> so apologies. Um, thanks. My name is um, Deanna Matthews. I am Associate Department Head for Undergraduate Affairs in Engineering and Public Policy. Um, we are a department in the College of Engineering, um, but are very interdisciplinary based. And I'll touch on a couple of our different programs, but mostly on our undergraduate and MS program, because I think that's um, probably most applicable to the group of people that, is, that are here. Um, I do like to take a moment to talk about what is this space. You all probably also have a better idea of this than some of the other people that I um, have to explain this to, but um, also gives an idea of what kind of work we do within our department in terms of, of research and thus the, the courses that end up trickling down to students. Um, we do a lot of work where the technical issues matter um, in terms of deciding um, policy and societal impacts. Um, so for example, when we think about the three vehicle revolutions that we're undertaking in terms of one being a shift towards perhaps more ride sharing um, and non-ownership, um, looking at what are the impacts of making that shift, shift from um, individually owned automobiles to um, services like Uber and Lyft, um, who is paying for additional traffic, who's paying for additional um, air pollution um, and things like that. Um, we do a lot of tool building. Um, across our spectrums um, for quantitative analysis of different problems. Um, a lot of it is in the energy space um, as well as in ICT systems, um, but always with this eye for doing scenario analysis um, of the different issues that might be coming to play. Um, we have a large group um, as well as an individual master's program that really um, focuses on innovation. Um, and the policies that um, revolve around and are trying to catch up with innovations. Um, most recently looking at um, the impacts of supply chain issues through um, the COVID pandemic. Um, we also have a, a large segment of our um, faculty that are doing work in um, cybersecurity, um, blockchain, um, privacy and security networks, as well as information exchange. Um, so looking at um, how social networks are used for um, exchanging information um, across different spectrums. Um, but at the heart of all of these different spaces is this idea that understanding the, the true technical space um, and then helping to inform policymakers um, and decision makers in industry to make good decisions. Um, overall, um, our different educational programs is really about training technical people who are otherwise getting, um, otherwise have engineering degrees, have science degrees, and to be able to expand on that knowledge base that they have. These are students who want to work in highly regulated industries um, where public perception um, is, a, is a space where they need to understand um, and um, be able to communicate with that. We are a very quantitative discipline um, and I'm trying to make sure that those quantitative tools are being able to be used within um, the public uh, uh, the public side. Um, technology impacts on individuals and society. So we have a growing space looking at um, in, uh, engineering uh, justice issues as well. Um, we have all of our different coursework um, and research is very interdisciplinary based. Um, so we are um, always uh, have an interesting mix of students in our courses and thus a, a also an interesting mix in terms of the, the problems um, and the solutions that, that come out into them. Um, again, our graduates are really there in terms of understanding that interface between technology and society. Um, this is sort of our pitch that's always on the front page of our website, I think, in terms of trying to draw them in. 
Um, our department was actually established back in 1970. So we've been around for quite a while. Um, it was always established as a interdisciplinary space. We have about 50 faculty that have joined appointments across the colleges, including Heinz, including IPS that you're gonna hear from as well. Um, and so we, um, and most of those faculty retain a, a foot in their traditional discipline as well as a foot in EPP in order to, to bring that sort of solutions together. Um, we run on the order of 85 doctoral students. We have two different MS programs. One is the MS in engineering and public policy. Um, and I have a slide on that with our course requirements later. Um, and then we also have an MS in engineering and technology innovation management, and which is more of a technical MBA type program. Um, the, the latter, we actually have a lot of students that work on it as a dual degree. So they are earning an MS in a traditional technical field while also earning this um, MS in um, ETIM. Um, and then for the undergraduates, we have on, on the order of 100 students total. Um, and these students are getting additional majors um, in either engineering and public policy or in science, technology and public policy. Um, and um, I will talk mostly about that just because this is my ex area of expertise in terms of leading the undergraduate program, um, but I'm happy to answer questions and speak about the MS and EPP as well. Um, so again, we offer only an additional major. So all of the students coming into our programs are either gonna be engineering students. So they're either gonna be civil, chemical, electrical, computer, mechanical, or material scientists at the base. Um, and then they do our additional major on top to really expand the breadth of their knowledge. Um, they take some introductory courses um, as well as economics, statistics, decision science, and technical writing, technology policy electives, and I can talk to a little bit about those in a moment, and then a series of capstone um, courses, and I'll talk a little bit about those as well. Um, students who are getting an engineering undergraduate degree get the degree in engineering and public policy. And then students that aren't engineers get the degree that says science, technology, and public policy. Both the same, you just have to do it for ABET accreditation purposes. And actually, I just graduated a student, um, I guess two days ago, um, who was in Emily's program um, with the, the IPS degree or the IRP degree um, with the science, technology, and public policy. Um, so again, an interesting breadth of students that come into our program. Um, I felt like as I was listening um, to the Heinz <laughs> description, it's like, yes, that's what we do as well. Um, it, the, and it, our program really just talks, of, really represents the interdisciplinary nature of CMU. Um, this just gives you an idea of the kinds of coursework and problems that those students are, are approaching and, and learning. Um, and again, they're all full-fledged engineering students, um, and then they're getting this flavor of how do the disciplines interact with each other. Um, I'll talk a few minutes about our capstone project course, because I think that this is the one that um, it so well prepares our graduate for coming out and working in the real world, um, where we pull together about 25 students, split them up into smaller groups, but they're all working on the same problem just a different facet of it um, and allows them to, um, from a skill perspective, they have to figure out what is my individual piece of work? How does my piece of work really um, fulfill the, the goals of my smaller group? And how does my smaller group end up working towards helping to solve the bigger problem? Um, so throughout the course, we're always reminding students that this is how our jobs work um, in terms of having your own responsibilities your smaller group, but then the larger organization. Um, the students do a lot of work um, to improve collaboration, project management, teamwork skills, writing skills, presentation skills. Um, and when we talk to our alums, this is the class that they say, oh, this, I was ready to jump in um, and work right away. Um, I'll speak for a moment about the MS and EPP. This is a newer program that has now two years in the making um, and has um, the intent basically to capture some of the students that um, at CMU perhaps didn't find us um, as an additional major, um, but want to tack on a fifth year master's program to get this expanded skill set um, to allow them to work in this space. Um, but also we have found that we're capturing students from 
other universities that don't have an EPP space where they have traveled through um, a traditional um, engineering or science curriculum, but that, but that this is the, the next step that they see that they either wanna go work in government, do more policy related um, work, more consulting work. Um, so this is briefly those requirements for this program. There's two core courses, one that's on theory and practice of policy analysis, and one that emphasizes the quantitative methods for policy analysis. Um, and both of those courses are actually courses that are required of our PhD program. Um, so we don't take it easy on them. Um, they also do two additional courses in quantitative methods or technical spaces. So if they wanna learn more about energy systems, cybersecurity systems, they can. Um, we do find that a lot of our students are going and doing more statistics, machine learning, data analysis, and programming courses for those. They do two additional courses in social science or policy, typically um, doing more in economics and understanding regulatory um, issues within the technical space. Um, and then they have two elective courses. Um, for those electives, a lot of students are pursuing independent research or doing project-based coursework, um, which again, just expands their, um, their knowledge base in that project management space. Um, and I think that that was the last slide I had put together. Um, I am not usually the person who does a lot of the career stuff for the master's program. Um, and so I'm happy to um, talk a little bit more, but I don't have a lot more information <laughs> for, for them. Great, thanks so much for your presentation and for sharing with us, Deanna. Emily. Yes, let me share my... Excellent. So my name is Emily Half. I'm the Deputy Director of the Institute for Politics and Strategy. Um, and we are um, the home of political science at Carnegie Mellon. Um, we blend an analytical approach with quantitative and qualitative research methods with instruction on politics and political science, uh, international relations, foreign affairs, um, and policy. Um, that is really very forward looking. It, we are a university wide institute um, and some of our program, uh, I'll talk a bit about our mass one master's program that spans three colleges, computer science, engineering and um, Dietrich um, and our undergraduate our undergraduate programs are um, fully based in the Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences. So our undergraduate degrees, um, we offer a Bachelor of Science in International Relations and Politics, which is more of a, a it's a, a traditional political science major, but we have a, a strong focus obviously on international relations and a much more quantitative approach to the study of political science. Um, you'll see, um, I can talk a little bit about the coursework in a moment, but um, we also share a, a, a Bachelor of Science in Economics and Politics, which is an interdisciplinary degree housed within the Institute for Politics and Strategy and the Tepper School of Business in, in the um, undergraduate economics program. So we also span um, kind of Tepper and um, Dietrich in that major as well. And, and the minors I think are important to highlight because it talks about the type of coursework that we're offering. So we have a traditional international relations and politics minor. We have a brand new minor that we're launching and a number of course, courses that we're launching in military strategy and international relations. Um, and um, a lot of efforts in that space <clears throat> to integrate um, students who are pursuing careers in defense, um, in, 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 military, in the military, um, as well as recruiting um, undergraduate from the military academies to our graduate programs as well. We have a minor in politics and public policy that's affiliated with our Washington semester program. And I'll get to that in a moment as well. And then our cybersecurity and international conflict minor. <clears throat> So our undergraduate coursework um, curriculum provides quantitative and qualitative research instruction that I think sets apart our graduates from other political science programs across the country. Um, they have coursework in economics and statistics and behavioral decision making. All of those tools are used to help them understand um, uh, political institutions and international security issues, for example. Um, our students are also required to study a second language. And so those foreign language requirements really ensure that our students can make a global impact um, and, and uh, serve them well in 
a number of spaces. Uh, they also enter the workforce well-versed in technology and policy, cyber policy. So un unlike maybe in the engineering and public policy space where they are not necessarily developing, well, the undergraduate students are not necessarily developing the technical skills, but instead kind of really understanding the policy implications for cybersecurity and international security, uh, emerging technology impact on the future of warfare, for example. Um, and then uh, the Washington semester program is a really unique opportunity that Carnegie Mellon houses under the Institute for Politics and Strategy, but it is a program that is open to any undergraduate at Carnegie Mellon. Um, we have some engineering and public policy students is that Vienna students who've come. We have students actually from all of our undergraduate colleges who come to Washington DC for a full semester. They sent, spend a semester interning about 25 hours per week, um, while also taking a full semester of coursework in the space of politics, political science, and public policy. And our courses are all taught in our offices in space, which is located right on Capitol Hill next door to the Supreme Court and across the street from the Capitol. Um, and, and those students are really poised to, to um, well, so that's one intersection and one place for employment through internships. But I think those students are also um, are ready to jump in full force into, into the workforce after graduation, especially understanding how Washington DC functions. We have a Master of Science in International Relations and Politics, um, which combines the quantitative analysis, data analysis with political science and international relations instruction. I think it prepares students for careers in research and intelligence analysis, quantitative analysis, cybersecurity policy, and defense policy decision making. Um, all of our master's candidates, this is a two year master's. Um, we do have some students who are pursuing this as an accelerated master's degree. So, parallel, you know, uh, doing their senior year at, and their first year of the master's program, and then um, also moving into that fifth year to complete the master's. But we also have this as a two year standalone program. All of our master's candidates complete a summer internship um, and are, are required to do a summer internship and apply the skills that they've learned. Um, in the real world and in a variety of um, sectors and fields. The other master's degree that we have is our Master's of Information Technology Strategy, which is a cooperative endeavor of the College of Engineering, the School of Computer Science, and the Institute for Politics and Strategy. Um, and this program really provides a multidisciplinary education that prepares students to define and conceptualize the emerging environment of threats caused by cyber operations, opportunities for enhanced information analysis and exploitation, development and management of innovative information technology systems, and, and really decision-making challenges associated with all of those spaces. We have coursework that is focusing on data analytics, politics and strategy, information security, and software network systems. Um, there is a capstone project course um, that is required that requires partnership with external stakeholders um, and and that is you know a full semester project and then they also we will be adding um, to this this 18 month program um, a, a required summer internship as well as one of the options um, and I think it prepares students for careers as software engineers AI engineers business technology analysts data scientists um, cybersecurity officers, intelligence analysts, uh, and we are recruiting directly from military academies as well for, for this master, for both of our master's degrees. Sorry. Um, so as I had mentioned in a bit, our students are entering a lot of different sectors and fields, consulting, federal and state government, uh, governmental agencies, advocacy groups and nonprofits, um, the law going into legal careers after this, and, and of course, technology companies. And this is just a little bit about us and how to reach me after, after this if you'd like to, to follow up. Thank you so much to our wonderful presenters. I think we can all agree that it's been very interesting, very informative. Thank you all so much. Um, just to get things moving in terms of questions, um, I had a question that uh, I thought I'd pose that might be on the minds of some of the employers here. So we have employers on this group that are uh, from organizations of, of different sizes, different industries. 
Um, I'm wondering, uh, and I'm gonna pose this to Randy since you were our first uh, presenter. Um, what are the cyber security concerns that organizations of all shapes and sizes might share? Uh, and how is CMU preparing our students to be able to address those concerns? Well, that's a great question. And we certainly, at least part of my presentation as well as the other presentations, focusing on cybersecurity as a challenge area for all organizations that are relying upon information technology to make their organizations more efficient. So how do we identify some of the, the commonalities around cybersecurity preparedness of identifying vulnerabilities, identifying threats, using that risk-based management approach to determine what's most critical to an organization? What are their critical assets? What are the threats, whether that be an individual, a group, a foreign, national, nation state organization? How do we build the knowledge, skills, and abilities to identify threats that have the means, the motive, and the opportunity to exploit the vulnerability? And what is the potential impact to an organization? And really that's categorized as how do we prevent, detect, and to respond to those threat or threat adversaries that are trying to cause harm. Now, as that risk management, uh, you know, goes into an organization, the risk of a financial services organization may be different from the risk of a water, power, or energy company, which may be slightly different from an educational organization. So we try to build that foundation of using that sound risk management approach, identifying the critical assets to that organization, identifying the threats that could impact the confidentiality, availability, integrity, and then use that as a way to build that solid technical foundation to address those specific cybersecurity challenges. And I think that methodology would apply to all of the critical infrastructure sectors and really any organization that are relying upon technology to deliver a critical system or service. Excellent response. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Any questions? I would we invite you to please feel free to take yourselves off mute and pose your questions. Um, no question is uh, a bad one. We want you to uh, make sure you've got the experts here. So please join in. I've got a general one that often we get. Um, so Emily, Deanna, Randy, you, you know your students well, you know the kinds of things that get them excited. If I'm an employer on this call, how, how do I get students excited about my internship, my program? Um, what, what's the best way to, to make that connection? Emily, I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Um, the one thing that I think is perhaps a, um, I am seeing much more in my students is a desire to work at organizations where they can see themselves doing well and doing good um, and not working for um, a company that's just trying to make more money for the sake of making more money. Um, I've had even my two or three a year out alums who are coming and saying, I'm not doing it anymore. Um, and so I think that that, um, it, the honesty, I had another student who came in who was really excited. He had just switched jobs um, and he said he had been really frustrated. This was on the energy side, um, but he felt like all of the job postings were greenwashing, that they were come, we're gonna, you're going to go work on renewable energy. But when he got the interview, he was realizing it was all going to be about how do we keep the coal plant open? And that's not what he wanted to do. Um, and so I, so I do think that regardless of whatever the, your, your positions are, that you're honest with the students, you're honest in those postings about, about what it is um, and, and, and helping the students to see where your um, your efforts are going to be doing good for um, the community and society overall um, within your company. It's really interesting. I think my students are very much in it for the same thing. They come, you know, into these, especially the undergraduate students, but come into it because they want to make an impact in the world in some meaningful way. Um, and, and I think that's what they're looking for in their internships as well. I, I, I agree 100%. And also uh, the students, 
that are getting the internships, they may not be entirely sure that that's the right internship. So any opportunities where they have to kind of explore different opportunities during that internship, maybe some job rotation, uh, we certainly want to encourage our students to find out what they want to do, but also possibly find out what they don't want to do. So a little bit of diversity in projects and opportunities during the internship, I think would be very valuable as well. As well as some mentorship, um, some directed mentorship through the internships, I think would be great. Um, knowing that there's a person who perhaps is talking with them about career opportunities, um, introducing them to other people in the organization to also have those discussions, I think is really interesting. And there's a question in the, in the chat about setting up internships um, and are they expecting to be paid? Um, the, the credit one is, is dependent on the program. Um, I know that for our ETIM program, the students also have to do a summer internship. Um, and so they do get credit um, and are required to have one. Um, but for undergraduates, it's not a requirement to have an internship. Um, they do want them to be paid um, just because they, the opportunities are out there. Um, uh, we understand though, that especially in some different government organizations, that that's not always um, able to happen um, and that there are a lot of volunteer ones out there. Um, we have within our department a program to help support a, a couple of students every summer who really want those kinds of positions. So please do send them. Um, you can email the Career Center, get on their list, but also send things directly to us and I circulate them directly to students. Um, it's so great when I've just had a student come in saying that they need something and then two days later somebody sends, hey, I have this opening and I'm like, oh, that would be perfect. Um, and we make that match um, really quickly. Yeah, and I would say, um, yeah, I'm ha we're happy to make the matches. Um, our students are looking, obviously, pay is fabulous, but um, especially for the Washington semester program, they are receiving credit for that. Uh, so if it is a semester-based internship in Washington, D.C., they will receive credit. It doesn't have to be paid. Um, there's obviously an internship learning agreement that the internship supervisor needs to kind of agree to the, to the learning outcomes because it is a for-credit experience. Um, but, you know, any sort of little benefits are always helpful too, even if it's just like a small travel stipend or something along those lines. But we, my students um, also have access to a number of um, fellowships that help support unpaid or low paid internships. In fact, the Institute for Politics and Strategy runs a Friedman Fellowship Program that helps support unpaid and low paid internships in Washington, D.C. to get students into D.C., um, especially in public, they have to be public sector um, uh, positions, um, but it's a great opportunity for any undergrad or graduate student at CMU to kind of be in D.C., even if it's an unpaid internship, because we do see the value in that. So we're here to help them with those internships, whether they're paid or unpaid. Those are great questions. I also put some more information in the chat as well, some resources. And uh, Randy, I did put the information about Heinz College participation in the Federal Community Service Work Study Program as part of our internship offerings. Thank you. Um, other questions? Well, thank you so much for all the presenters that shared their time today in this very busy time of year. Um, and uh, thank you so much for those joining on the call. It was really informative and engaging to learn about these programs, how they each offer unique qualities, but also have ways in which they intersect and interact together. So um, we're excited to connect you with the, the great talent that's being developed and fostered here at Carnegie Mellon. And, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. A um, couple questions came in privately to me. The recordings will be given and available. So if you wanted to refresh some of the things that were going on, um, that recording will be available, including to sessions that you might not have signed up for throughout our campus engagement day. So once again, thank you so much, Emily, Deanna, Randy, and Jocelyn, and everyone on the call. You have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone.